Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Friday, July the 27th, 2018. Let's talk about the unification match taking place between two unbeaten fighters at lightweight. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. So, you have a new week. Last week it was a battle of unbeatens for the undisputed cruiserweight title. This week it's a battle of unbeatens for a unified lightweight title. You have unbeaten Robert Easter. He's the much taller man. And he's taking on unbeaten Mikey Garcia. Right? Now we're less than a minute into the video. Let me pick a side right here. I like Mikey Garcia to win. I'm not going to do a traditional hedge here. Right? I like Mikey to win. What I'm going to do, you do what you want. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sprinkle some of that investment on Mikey Garcia by knockout. Let me point out, I know, I know, when you see the guys together, it's hard to believe that these two guys are in the same weight class. Easter is a giant compared to Mikey Garcia, right? An absolute giant. But what I want people to do is to look at two fights, right? Robert Easter against Richard Comey. Now in that fight, Easter gets dropped gets off the canvas, right? It's a very good fight, but understand Easter barely won that fight, barely. For our purposes, and that fight officially is a split decision, win by Easter, but for our purposes, what's significant in that fight is the fact that Easter gives away his height. Folks, height is only good if you know how to use it. Right now, the great Mike Tyson had a saying. He said, everyone has a plan until they get hit in the mouth. When Robert Easter gets hit in the mouth, he then starts bending forward. He comes to you. Right? One minute, you're fighting Mount Everest. The next minute, the guy is right here, right in front of you, trading with you. This isn't a guy who, in a shootout, has the discipline, that's the word, to stay on his back foot or to lean, to force you to come reach for him. No, no. This guy is a guy who is going to give away at least half a foot. Right? Slugging it out with you. So I know people in Easter's camp are saying, hey, Easter had a bad night against not Comey, but Javier Fortuna, who we fought after Comey, right? In that fight, guess what? Easter gets involved in a shootout. The two guys are slugging away from inside the pocket. Easter barely won that fight. Officially, that fight was a split decision. Right, so the Easter crowd wants you to believe, hey, you know, he had an off night. The problem is, I saw that night before. I saw it when he fought Richard Comey. This is a guy who, if you rough him up, he wants to rough you back up. Boxing becomes fighting. The height is gone. Right, now let me just say, that with regard to Mikey, just understand that Mikey Garcia is a gifted puncher. Right? Gifted puncher. With exquisite timing. Put another way, we saw Orlando Salido coming in on his front foot, getting inside on Vasil Lomachenko, roughing up Lomachenko beating Lomachenko. That's Lomachenko's loss, folks. Coming forward, smothering Lomachenko. Guess what? Orlando Salido, on his front foot, tried to come forward on Mikey Garcia. He gets caught with some shots. He hits the canvas. 
right? Mikey, don't don't be fooled by Mikey's persona, right? Mikey comes across as low key, laid back, easy going, and stuff like that. In the ring, he knows who he is, right? He's the guy who flushed Adrian Broner out of the pocket. He was chasing Broner, right? You want to see Broner on his back foot? Look at any of the rounds of his fight against Mikey Garcia. I believe that fight was in Madison Square Garden. Broner's fleeing the pocket. He knows being in the pocket is not the place to be against Mikey Garcia, right? And Garcia's timing is such that he's catching guys flush, right? Well, guess what? In my opinion, he's going to find Robert Easter right in the pocket, right where he wants him, trading with him. Let me also say, too, you see two guys. One guy's much taller than the other guy. It's a mistake. It's a mistake to think that the taller guy has the advantage. It's going to be much harder for Robert Easter to find Mikey Garcia's body than it will be for Mikey Garcia to find Robert Easter's body. Right? Easter's going to be in the pocket. He's taller. Mikey's going to be looking at the guy's body. You don't want Mikey Garcia having the ability to find your body, to hit you with blistering hooks. Right? So, in my opinion, Mikey, who has belts in three different weight classes, I don't even understand the pre fight hype where Easter's trying to question the quality of Mikey Garcia's opponents. Folks, <laughs> Mikey hasn't fought one champ. Mikey's beaten multiple champs. Understand, his fight against Adrian Broner wasn't even for a title. Broner's not one of the champs I'm talking about. And understand, Broner himself has held multiple titles. Right? Think it through. Mikey has fought elite competition. Understand, if you're going to say to a guy you're fighting, hey man, you haven't fought anybody, then your biggest fights better be people with bigger names than Richard Comey and Javier Fortuna. Right? So I'm expecting Garcia to get inside on Easter. Right? I think at first Easter is going to present a problem. Right? The size gap. If Easter's clever early, he should keep Mikey at the end of a jab. He should stick and move on his back foot. But somewhere in this fight, Easter is going to get hit in the mouth. And then Garcia is going to become Mike Tyson. He's going to have a guy who's hit in the mouth, who has his ego bruised, who then decides he's going to trade with him. Now understand, Comey dropped Easter. I know people are going to say, well, Easter's glove just touched the canvas momentarily. Folks, in boxing, that's called a knockdown. Right? Easter's going to find himself trading with a puncher who's a much bigger puncher than Comey. Much bigger puncher. I'm expecting Garcia to take control of this fight. I personally would not be surprised if Garcia doesn't get the stoppage. In closing, the bet I like is Mikey Garcia to win. I'm going to sprinkle some of the bet I'm making on Mikey Garcia by KO. Understand, if Mikey wins by KO, I'm in the penthouse. I win both sides of the bet, right? You win by KO, guess what? You also win. If Mikey doesn't get the KO, I'll be all right, because I'll still make money because I'm going to structure the bet in a way where I make money as long as Mikey Garcia wins the fight. But I want everyone here online to understand the risk involved. Robert Easter is an unbeaten fighter. If Robert Easter wins the fight, and beats Mikey Garcia, you lose it all. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments. 
in the comment section to this video. Let me also say this too about Mikey Garcia and it needs to be said. I've noticed in Mikey Garcia fights that Garcia is prepared for his opponent's style from the opening bell of the first round. I believe Mikey Garcia is a guy who studies film more than most and who has a game plan. He can see a fighter and he can know if he can beat that fighter. So interestingly enough, and I do think it's noteworthy, Garcia, who in my book is one of the best in the sport pound for pound, is calling out a champ at 147 pounds. But curiously enough, it's not widely considered pound for pound fighter Terence Crawford. It's not another guy on the short list of pound for pound fighters. No, he's calling out Errol Spence. Because I believe Garcia knows, looking at Spence's style, looking at the body shots that Spence's opponent landed on Spence in Spence's last fight, a fight that the public thinks was a lopsided first round knockout, a fight that the boxing hardcore knows was literally seconds away from the end of the first round before Spence landed the big shot that ended it all. I think Mikey Garcia knows, looking at Spence, that he can beat Spence. Mikey doesn't need to be involved in further fights at lightweight. Right? This is a guy who, after all, fought Broner at 140. Is calling out Spence at 147. Right? By the way, Spence is calling out other people. Right? Spence doesn't want to address... Mikey Garcia, just food for thought. I believe Mikey wouldn't have taken this fight if he didn't look at the films and reach the conclusion that he could force Easter into the pocket and then take out his ribcage. Right? I believe you're going to see a Mikey Garcia from early in the fight. And by the way, he drops Orlando Salido early in that fight. There's a knockdown in his fight against Salido where he's up against the ropes and you could tell he knows Salido's going to jump inside. He knows it because he knows Salido from studying him. Right? I believe Garcia's going to be prepared for Easter from the opening bell. I think this guy is one of the more mentally oriented fighters in the sport of boxing right enjoy the show while it lasts I'm not sure if this one goes 12 rounds my pick in this one is Mikey Garcia that's how I see it let me hear from you I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video thanks for stopping by